I'm Mark. And I'm Josh. Welcome to Comics Are Awesome, brought to you by Alter Ego Comics, for the week of July 12th, 2017. For those of you that have been watching us for a while, we were previously known as Alter Ego Comics TV for over 300 episodes of talking about quality comics, comics that are awesome, and we've decided to rebrand the show as Comics Are Awesome, which lines up with our private Facebook page where we continue the conversation about all things that are great within comics. And aligns e with our philosophy that comics, that comics are, in are fact, awesome. awesome. Yes. So each week, Josh and I will be here to give you our top picks of the books that came out this week. And we've actually launched a Patreon page to help uh, the show to grow, to help us provide more quality content, to upgrade our equipment. So for those of you that become Patreon sponsors at a certain level, you will have access to bonus videos where we talk about additional items that came out each week. We talk about comic-based movies, we give our reviews on those, and there are some other bells and whistles in there that you can unlock by becoming a Patreon sponsor. So we hope that you'll do that to help us continue to spread the word that comics are awesome. This week, my pick, and this was a tough one, um, I'm going to go with Amazing Spider-Man number 30 as my pick of the week, written by Dan Slott, artwork by Stuart Immonen, and this is a uh, Secret Empire tie-in, the second part of a tie-in to Secret Empire, where Peter Parker is basically taking on Otto Octavius, or vice versa. Um, Otto, of course, is in a new uh, cloned body, which is far superior to what he was before. No bowl cut, no fatness, uh, no glasses, that sort of thing. And it's a clone of the Parker DNA, so yes. he's got spider powers, too. And he also has Peter Parker's memories because of that time when they switched bodies and Freaky Friday and Superior Spider-Man happened. So uh, Otto is out to destroy Parker Industries. It's the company that he built when he was actually, when his mind was in the body of Peter Parker. And Peter is trying to stop him at every turn. Uh, we've got Parker Industries adventures in multiple cities around the world, but it really comes to a head in Shanghai where Peter assembles... Uh, basically a lot of his his Parker Industries tech and some of his helpers to stave off an attack by Dr. Octopus, who basically wants to gain all of the uh, intellectual property that's at Parker Industries. Dan Slott continues to do an amazing job writing this title. He has for many, many years. And the really great thing about this, as well as with the previous issue, is that it weaves kind of seamlessly into the Secret Empire storyline without being heavy-handed. You're not being hit over the head. It doesn't feel forced. It feels very logical the way the story has progressed. Amazing Spider-Man is my pick of the week. And I loved the way that uh, they used, especially at the beginning of the issue, the Secret Empire interactions to show how Peter's changed and grown over time, over the slot run. Uh, the role he took in the crisis uh, is super great and fun. Uh, my pick of the week this week is Defenders number 3, written by Brian Michael Bendis, with art by David Marquez. Uh, this follows Luke Cage, Jessica Jones, Iron Fist, Daredevil, and according to the cover, The Punisher, as they do stuff and punch people and shoot things. Um, so let's talk about media for a second here. Uh, the, uh, cause I really, really like this comic, but I'm not sure it's for everyone. Uh, there are a lot of different kinds of comics. You know, I can give the first volume of Saga to anybody and provided they're an adult, they will love it probably. Um, but I can't give, for example, this volume of Amazing Spider-Man is fu fully readable and understandable on its own. But it's not. It's difficult to appreciate without at least some understanding of the backstory from the Dan Slott run because there's so much interconnected, so much long-term stuff. And that's what comic fans want, at least traditionally. Um, that's the benefit of the Marvel and the DC universes is, is continuity, the connected, the, the feeling that the stories matter. Uh, and this may be the poster child for that continuity in a way that doesn't really work right. And it does work right. It's um because it's based on characters that have sort of risen and fallen in popularity over the years like from 1980 to 90 to 2004 there was like no luke cage stories there's like very few luke cage stories after the end of heroes for hire was that 80 was that or was that mid 80s when heroes for hire ended uh, power man and iron fist yeah, so. ended in the the mid to late 80s and then there was a relaunch of we don't talk heroes about the 90s hire. cage <laughs> there was the cage series in the 90s which you'll find in most quarter boxes and comic shops and ran for like four issues uh, or five it was maybe short. a dozen i don't know Daredevil generally is the highest profile character on here. Jessica Jones is a relatively new character. Uh, but 
because these characters are kind of fresh, they're on the new the Defenders TV show, they're on all the Netflix shows together, this is great for people who've seen those and have read nothing else of the past, but if you're a comics fan, the interactions here are just amazing. There's great dialogue, hilarious character moments, um, we get to see Frank Castle being Frank Castle, I just, there were multiple points in this book where I just cheered and smiled and laughed, uh, I had the best feeling I ever had while reading a comic, just so much fun. Fun. Uh, Bendis' dialogue on these guys is great, and I just... Defenders is awesome. Just so much fun. You should be reading it. <laughs> Next up for me is a new book from Black, Black Mask called Cal Exit, written by Matteo Pizzolo. His name used to be Matt Pizzolo, but I guess it's Matteo now. And uh, art by some person. Where is it? I almost got it. There we go. Aman K. Nahopan. So you kind of need to put your political stance aside when you read this book because it is basically about California seceding from the United States because two-thirds of the people of the state of California did not vote for the current president who bears a little bit of a resemblance in, in uh, philosophy to our current president, Donald Trump. And it's drawn, basically. <laughs> yeah, well, you only see him. There's one panel where you but see it, him. But it's very clearly It looks a lot like be. Donald Trump. But yeah. this is also the future, right? Because he said he's talking about having been reelected. Yeah. And it's to a yeah. second term. So if this is our timeline, it's the future. So it's two years since he was reelected, so it would be like six years into right. his current term. Uh, and there's an underground movement, a group of rebels that are trying to... Uh, it's actually... Uh, those of you that, that like... Uh, complicated territorial stories maybe like game of thrones you know you have the pacific ghost pacific ghost pacific coast sister cities alliance the sovereign citizens coalition uh you have an area that's occupied by the u.s national guard you have unoccupied sister cities battleground cities and bunkerville militants uh this is all in california so california is the only state that has seceded and we we view the current situation through the eyes of a uh, a courier <laughs> who's kind of a cross between Kevin Bacon's character in Quicksilver where he was a bike messenger and um, the, the Jason Statham movies where he was oh, what is that the called? transporter yes the transporter uh, but he is he is amusing and funny and and kind of sympathetic but also a guy with maybe no morals um, and there. It, it, it's it's it exceeded my expectations. The artwork is outstanding. I thought the writing was really top notch, uh, and we're introduced to a pretty broad cast of characters here, including uh, Steve Jobs Wolverine. Yes, like the lead bad guy is clearly supposed to be Steve Jobs with like a turtleneck and like the kind of the same kind of overall look, but he's like a sociopath. <laughs> yes, yes. So they're doing whatever it takes to find actually one person who's kind of leading this movement or is the poster child for this movement and uh, when she makes an entrance man is it grand <laughs> top-notch stuff from black mass they've done some really good stuff but it's kind of been under the radar because they are a smaller newer publisher uh, and I, I think you can pick up Cal exit with no reservations at all about not enjoying it I, again put the politics aside it read it strictly as a, a story of rebellion it's Star Wars is it no it's not <laughs> but I really think that you'll like Cal exit I did uh, Spider-Man 2, number one, by Brian Michael Bendis. Hey, there's that guy again. And Sarah, art by Sarah Pacelli. Uh, was Pacelli on the original Miles run, or was she the second? Is she co-creator? I don't I don't know. Okay. Uh, so, uh, many years ago, when there was still a Ultimate Universe, uh, next to the Marvel Universe, like two doors down, or three doors down, possibly, Kryptonite, uh, there was a book called Spider-Man where the Miles Morales from our universe, I'm sorry, the Peter Parker from our universe and the Miles Morales from that universe met and punched people and there was a chameleon and Tony Stark, both uh, Sam Jackson, Tony Stark, or I'm sorry, both Sam Jackson, Nick Fury and regular Nick Fury. They're all, all manner of people. Tony Stark was there. Uh, the good thing is you don't need to know any of that crap. All you need to know is there was a crossover universe. Uh, plus now uh, these guys are in the same universe. They're both in the main Marvel universe. And this is the first acknowledgement I remember of that. When Peter actually points out, you know, and Miles is like, oh, my, my universe is gone. Like, they haven't really talked about it in any of the books um, since Secret War when it happened. But what we get is a team-up between two Spider-Men. Uh, twice the jokes, twice the awesome. Uh, if you are reading Miles Morales, you absolutely want to read this. We get some great uh, character moments with Miles and Genki and uh, a new girl, Barbara. And 
Peter is really good. Uh, we get Taskmaster, who looks a lot like Skeletor. Is that Ultimate Taskmaster? It looks or? like Azrael Skeletor. Yes. I, it, uh, I, it has to be Ultimate Taskmaster because it doesn't look anything. It, it's got a similar, bears a similar resemblance to uh, our Taskmaster. But that's got to be the Ultimate Taskmaster. Okay. Because Peter's the one that introduced him. Unless mm -hmm. the dialogue balloon is coming from somewhere else off panel. And Peter's not from the Ultimate Universe, but... That's fine. He does a lot of research. So anyway, the big question at the end of the original Spider-Man was uh, Peter found out who Miles Morales was in our reality, in the, the main Marvel Universe, the 616 Miles Morales. And that's what this series is about, revealing who that person is and uh, what life is like now that there's another Miles Morales running around with who's Spider-Man. Um, great dialogue, great character moments, super fun, uh, just awesome. And that's why we talk about it. My final selection this week, Kill or Be Killed, number 10, written by Ed Brubaker, artwork by Sean Phillips. This is the final issue of the current story arc that finds our, our lead character, What's-His-Nuts. What is this guy's name? Kyle. Is it Kyle? No, no Kyle's it's from not, Outcast. It's not Kyle. Uh, Dylan. 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 Uh, who is basically had enough of being a gun for hire for this demon that made him a deal many issues ago when he was trying to kill himself and the demon saved his life. Uh, and in exchange, he has to kill someone every month. Assuming there is an actual demon and it's not all in his head. Which is <laughs> kind of the plot of this issue. Well, it's the plot of the whole series. It's never been clear. I, you know, to me, it didn't hit home until this issue. Uh -huh. And especially when, when, you know, they get to that point yeah. where... You know, is this all in his head, or did this really happen? And I think that's an amazing twist and a, an amazing way to look at the series. Uh, and I've I've enjoyed every issue of the mm -hmm. series. Again, it's it's uh, Ed Brubaker and Sean Phillips who can almost do no wrong, or no matter what they do. But they do best when they're dealing with kind of crime noir. But now they've thrown in the supernatural element, and that's one of the cool things about this issue is the artwork and the way Phillips draws the demon and the way the demon's presence uh, is pictured in the book. It is outstanding. You could um, argue that they had a supernatural element in Fatal as well. Yeah, they she did. Like well, a... I didn't read Fatal much longer because I... No. Yeah. There was definitely supernatural stuff in there. Um... <laughs> A lot of stuff goes down in this issue. If you're not checking out Killer Be Killed, do yourself a favor and pick up the first uh, collected edition, which is available right now, or seek out the individual issues. We're only 10 issues in, but this is an outstanding series for those of you that like uh, horror or noir or crime or just comics that are awesome. And this doesn't have an end point yet, right? I don't think so. Okay. Because there was so much... It felt like it was coming together, like they could... End it maybe after a couple issues. But. Yeah, this is the, this wraps up the second arc. Okay. And Brubaker says, and it can only go uphill from for Dylan from here, right? It can't possibly get worse. Question mark. You mean downhill? It says uphill. Oh. So yes. Okay. Making it seem like things will get better. Yeah. I'm betting they won't. But downhill is better because it's easier to go downhill than it is. Oh yeah. To go up. Anyway, I apologize, Ed Brubaker, for questioning your word choice. Uh, last up for me this week is Dark Days, the casting, number one, prelude to metal. <sighs> We're going to have to talk about this, having Batman books without any obvious thing that relates to Batman being in the title. But anyway, so this is the second one shot that sets up the prelude to metal, which is a six issue miniseries coming out this summer from Scott Snyder and Greg Capullo. Uh, what would I remember them from? Batman, New 52. Court of the Owls. Yes, some of the greatest Batman stories ever told. Essentially the entire 50 plus issue run of Pretty much, Batman. Yeah. Uh, so, for those of you looking at that saying, I kind of want to check out Metal, but I don't know if I need to read these uh, one-shots, you should you should read the one-shots. They are not one-shots. At least, I mean, I don't know what's happening in Metal because I haven't read it yet because it's not August, but the way the story happened in the first issue, the way the story happened in this issue, it is very clearly story setting up for the big event. Um... I was tepid on the first one. I, I liked it. I didn't love it because there was so much going on, so many Marvel characters. I wasn't sure exactly DC how it was. Character? Whatever. Marvel characters. Lots there of There were Marvel characters. characters in the first issue. There are DC characters who are marvelous. Yes. Uh, yeah, it's a rare crossover. And uh, But this one starts to bring it together. And th this almost feels like... Uh, do you remember when Jeff John's Hawkman run came out? And he kind of fixed Hawkman so that all of his various continuities worked together and made sense. This feels kind of like that. You've got a lot of disparate elements in the DC Universe that are not necessarily connected, and some of them aren't even really used anymore, like the Blackhawks and the Challengers of the Unknown, 
and they're all kind of being woven into this large-scale story. Uh, it's told from the point of view of Batman, but a lot of the narration is from a journal by Carter Hall, Hawkman. So you get uh, all kinds of stuff from all corners of the DC Universe. And I actually need to go back and talk to you about some of these, because they're characters I don't recognize, and I'm sure you can tell me who they are. But uh, just great. Uh, the laundry list of creators. It's co-written by Scott Snyder and James Tinian, who is uh, knocking it out of the park on Detective. Detective was this close to being one of my picks this week. Amazing book. Um, with art by Jim Lee, A. Kubert, Andy Kubert? Andy. Yeah. Andy Kubert and uh, John Romita Jr. So top-notch artists, uh, arguably some of the best artists working in comics, uh, top-notch writers, uh, the Joker, the Green Lantern, uh, Hawkman, uh, just everything you want to read in a comic book to get you ready to get you uh, to get you ready for Dark Knight's Metal. <laughs> for Metal, yes. For Metal. And it was excellent. This, this is essential for any DC Comics fan, and I should mention at this point that this is not a paid advertisement for DC. Uh, we just happened to wear the same shirt on the same day. Our brains are so in tune after working together for more than 10 years. So, that is going to do it for our standard episode of Comics Are Awesome. And as I mentioned, if you become a Patreon backer, or what is it called? Promoter? Sponsor? just a patron. If you become a pa patron, Patreon patron? This is kind of new for us. Uh, we are going to have an additional video where we talk about more stuff that we like this week. So to get access to those, uh, become a patron on Patreon. You can always join our private Facebook group, Comics Are Awesome, and we'll include a link in the show notes for that. And you can ask questions either in the Facebook group or in the comments section of the YouTube videos, and we'll make sure that we get to those. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you soon.